proceed with the question and answer segment. Um, you may uh, propose a, a, um, comments um, on the panel contributions as well. You may propose a question directly at a speaker or you may propose a, a question um, that's open and uh, the panel can contribute if they wish to do so. Um, anybody with any comments or questions? Uh, yes, brother. Um, I'll try to be as quick as possible. It's kind of a comment on all of the panellists um, and what they had to say. Um, I'm coming from a recent history of many Afro-Caribbean young men and women within the last 30 to 40 years who their appeal to Islam came through social justice. Essentially, our first introduction to Islam was not through Muslims, was through listening to the lyrics of Public Enemy and Malcolm X. And we all read the letter of Malcolm X from Hajj. But like Dorothy who pulls back the curtain and sees the wizard for the smoke and mirrors he is, unfortunately, we came into Islam and we began to see essentially a reflection of the system that we was leaving behind us. We left a system of Christianity that was based upon the imposition of racism and white supremacy. And we came into Islam and found a system based upon the imposition of Arab supremacy. We saw young black men and women go from being Winstons of the West Indies to now they want to become Leroy's of Arabia. And unfortunately, this was done often with the justification of fiqh, of jurisprudence, of in the name of caliphate. When we have scholars such as Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahim Allah, saying in his book, Itikad Surat al-Mustaqim, that Arabs are superior to non-Arabs, then yes, this house somehow takes on a divine writ. We see issues of hadith literature being fabricated and attested to the Prophet and saying that black people still, they're, they're hungry all the time and are only happy when their bellies are full and commit zina. But this is not even an issue of Sunnism, because within the system of the Shia, we see the same racism being implemented against non-Persians. Because we, as Sister Sudani said, if we're going to talk about the idea of an implementation of the Sharia, we have to talk about Caliphate and Imamate. And we have to talk about Wilayat al faqih by Imam Khomeini. Will Wilayat al faqih become a means to imposition of Persian supremacy? Because we see in the Hadith literature of the Shia, same comments being made about black people, saying they're no good for marriage, they still, and in fact one even says in al kafi that they're part of the race of the jinn. Now, as I said, just very quickly, we even within the issue of the caliphate, the caliphate became a means as an imposition out of Arab imperialism. And it began, even Imam al Muradi in his Akam al Sultaniyah says of the criteria to be a caliph, you have to be the Quraysh. But yet, if we believe that the Quran was revealed unsectarian, unracial, and particularly if we use the final khutbah of Rasulullah at the Hajj, where he said there is no security over an Arab, or a non-Arab, or a black over a white, then how can we then justify and appeal to the global masses that we want to bring in a system of justice, but by the way, you have to do it under Arab zones, uh, Arab leadership. You don't have the right to be an African. Someone asked me one time, what's my name? I gave them my name. They said, that doesn't sound like a Muslim name. In actuality, what they meant was, it doesn't sound like an Arab name. Let us not mistake Islam for Arabism. There is no superiority of Arabs in Islam. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said he was the best of Arabs and not to boast. He didn't say the Arabs were the best. Um, just to conclude, inshallah, I think... We have to remember these aspects, and like I say, we cannot as Muslims, in good heart, go to people and invite them to Islam, invite them to a system of justice. Because it was Imam al-Shatabi, in his Muqasid al-Sharia, that said that one of the aspects of the Sharia, 
and we can extend this to the caliphate, is the implementation of justice. Not just justice in the sense that we want to abolish Reba, we want to abolish sweat sort of culture. We also want to abolish racial injustice across the world. But we cannot do it if we are going to go into the lights of Africa that now is going through a recolonization, but this time Chinese colonization. And for, for, for over 500 years, they had European colonization. But the European colonizers, in many instances, were only replacing Arab colonizers. <coughs> we like to criticize the West for its part in the slave trade, but yet we forget to mention that Arab Muslims went into African lands and enslaved African Muslims. Idris Olamon, who was the Sultan of Bor, sent a letter to the Emir of Egypt imploring on him to stop Arab Muslims coming into Africa, enslaving African Muslims and sending them into slavery. And as Prophet Said said, he alluded to, but for some reason he never mentioned it, a crime was committed and that was the Arab hijacking of Islam. And it has continued. And one of the reasons, we have to be honest, of the dislike of the Othmani Khilaf was the fact that they said, Alhamdulillah, we accept the truth of Islam, but we don't accept Arabism. We have to begin with an internal decolonization of Islam before we can ever begin to talk about the rest of the world. And that's just my comment on the subject.